Welcome back to Humankind. In this video I'm going to show you why the Harappans are undoubtedly the best culture in the ancient era, thanks to largely this, the Canal Network, which is essentially a very overpowered farmer's quarter. And to be honest, I think I may have discovered a little bit of a numerical exploit. I'm not going to go as far as to say Humankind is a perfectly balanced game with only one exploit, but man, this canal network is strong when you combine it with the fact that you can use gold or population to build these districts, you end up in a really funky spot where your city can basically infinitely grow. We're also going to talk a little bit more about what makes the Harappan strong throughout this video though, so do sit back and relax, but for starters I'm going to take you through this unique district. Here you can see a city of mine where I have two farmers caught. They are supported by my unique district, the canal network, and now I'll buy a third farmer's quarter for 31 gold, which I was halfway through producing. Watch here as I place another one down and then use gold to purchase them, right? Here's one, nine more food, and I'll buy another one out for 93 gold. However, now my gold is maxed out, but I can keep placing them. So let's carry on and actually see how ridiculous this can get. Here's another one. Granted I'm taking some stability penalties, you do have to take care of that, and while this can't last forever, you can at least do this exploit, this strategy, for quite a while. So you'll see now I can buy them with population. It'll cost me two population to complete this farmer's quarter, which would otherwise take four turns. I'm playing on a quick speed, by the way. You can see that I'm going to get one additional population every turn at the current growth rate of 32 food per turn. And I can even swap my farmers in and out, move my specialists around up the top here to improve that even more. But for the time being, I'll leave it at the default balanced policy, which is giving me, like I say, one population every turn, next population gain 65%, right? So here I am, buy it out with the population, hit this little button, and my city will lose two people. You can see now it's dropped down to six pop. It was at eight. That means I've lost some of my workers up the top. There's now only six of them, you'll notice. But I'm still gaining such an incredible amount of food that I'm gonna grow again in one turn. And while I might sacrifice some of my gold, shift another person over, now I have the exact same number of farmers I had before, but some additional districts which are providing me with even more food. I'm now netting 64 food, despite having two fewer populations than before. Let's push it even further to its limit. Another one down, another two populations sent out to build this poor district, never to return my city now at four pop, and only farmers here, but look, 91 food per turn, still obviously gaining one per turn, but actually a whole lot more. Look at those yields. Look at how much food we are getting, despite having sent over half, in fact, exactly half of our population to the chopping block, right? They're gone for good. We expelled them to build these districts. Now, we are taking some stability losses, so you will want to, as you go through this, also build fortifications or civics, however else you want to build up your stability. You can also keep your civics in line in the sort of center of politics to keep your population stable. And then you're through to your next era. That is just how powerful this canal network is. And if we dive into it a little deeper, you'll see it provides plus three food and plus three food per adjacent farmer's quarter. It also, of course, counts as a farmer's quarter for future adjacency bonuses and provides you with one more slot for a farmer so you can keep pounding in more farmers as your cities grow. Compare it to the normal farmer's quarter and it's basically three times as effective. Normal farmer's quarter only yielding one food, and an additional one per adjacent farmer's quarters. Now granted you can only build one of your unique emblematic districts, so you will need to combine it with those. But there's actually more things that make the Harappans the best culture, and one of them is this, the runners. The runners are the Harappans' unique unit. They're a very powerful one because all of your tribe people, all of your tribe's people from the Neolithic era will instantly turn into these runners. There is no cost to pay, okay? None at all. You can, they literally just upgrade for free into runners. And the runners are essentially just a more powerful scout. They have the movement of a later game cavalry. They have fantastic vision. And that matters. That matters because, and if you haven't seen my Things I've Learned About Humankind video, spoiler alert, 
One of the key things to having a good game in Humankind is having a good start. You might say, well, that's always the case, Jumbo. And yeah, you'd be right, but it's really important here with things like this. Placing down outposts. In Humankind, placing down outposts and grabbing land, even if you don't necessarily want to keep it later, although you should, but even if you don't, it's still a good idea to run around and place as many of these outposts down as you can. Land grab all day, baby. Now, as luck would have it, these runners, it's literally in the name, are very good at what they do. They run around the map, but of course it's more than just settling outposts, okay? You can also likely get more goody huts than anyone else, right? These discoveries can be made and harvested, and when you find them, what do you get? Well, more often than not, it's either more units, influence, so you can place more outposts like this one, or science, so you can get more technologies. So as you focus on food in your cities and getting as many farmers quarters down as you can at the expense of your populations, you can then send your runners out to gather influence and small boosts to science and gold as well, right? On average, you should be able to pick up more of these findings that will help you keep up with the science game and the influence game to allow you to focus purely on growth. It's really, really a powerful strategy. And when you think about population as currency, and when you think about expelling population to build more of these beautiful districts, you're going to end up really gamifying the system and, dare I say, nearly exploiting it here. Now, the emblematic quarters can only be built once per territory, which is another reason why this culture is so fantastically synergetic, right? You take your runners, you run around, you get as many territories as you can, and then hopefully, if you can work them into cities and, or at least connect them to cities, you can then build additional emblematic quarters throughout. Combine it with something like Purge here in the uh, Faith Tenants, where you get additional food for coastal waters as well, and you can see how moving forward, you're going to have more food than anybody ever. Uh, when I focus on era stars, I think that the Harappans are particularly good at these as well. Obviously, you're going to get your agrarian ones very easily. Also, though, your builder ones as well, right? The two go hand in hand. Combine that while you're discovering technologies and building up your influence, and you'll find that you'll move through the era stars very, very quickly indeed. And I think that synergy of the Harappans and the ability to pump out not only high food, but also build lots of districts and capture lots of territories leaves you in a really, really strong place as you think about transcending into the next era. Now, the Harappans, granted, aren't the only fantastic culture in the early game, right? We have the Egyptians who are very strong at industry. We have the Babylonians, who are, I would probably say, the best science uh, culture in the early game anyway. But man, look at this food. I mean, just look at it. And I think the key takeaway here is that you also get this, fertile inundations, plus one food on tiles, producing food, and plus one food on rivers. And remember, that stays with you forever. Your canal networks stay with you forever, and that trait, that additional food, stays with you forever as well. So as you move through the game, choosing the best starting culture in humankind, the Harappans, you can also choose, perhaps, to play in really any playstyle you want, right? You could stick through this affinity, the agrarian affinity, and carry it all the way, or you can customise it a bit as you go. Starting strong with lots of population will leave you in a position where you can choose any pathway. Uh, one other final thing to note, they do have an affinity action, as do all agrarian cultures. It's called Greener Pastures, and it's kind of fun. Uh, you can attract one population from each adjacent territory, city, or outpost when you use this affinity action. Uh, it does create a grievance against any of your opponents because you are actually taking those populations from your opponents. It's not just transferring populations between your outposts, but actually you can steal them from neighboring ones as well. So it's a really fun way to pinch some population from your neighbors. And then if you're really maniacal like me, you'll expel that population to build more farmers quarters, to get more food, to get more population, to expel, to build more farmers quarters. You can see how the loop plays on repeat. Hey, thank you very much for watching today, everybody, and do stick around for more Humankind, and until next time, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.